what's happened? Why, why, why does she appear to be so tone deaf and stiff? She's done this before. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, nothing's inevitable, and and second, it was not the greatest book tour, right? I no. mean, it was, you know, she did not, um, I, she she seemed, um, I, to, to say that she seemed a step slow, uh, I think, is, is, a, is a real understatement. All right, folks, um, funny we should be talking about Hillary Clinton, because our next guest, uh, Julian Zelizer, uh, author, professor of history and public affairs at Princeton University, and the author of The Fierce Urgency of Now, Lyndon Johnson, Congress, and the Battle for the Great Society, has penned a very interesting uh, column for CNN, Can Hillary Clinton Win Over the Left? Hello, Julian. Hi, thanks for having me. My pleasure. Now, can, I, I want to talk about, since you're the author of, uh, of that great book, The Fierce Urgency of Now, about Lyndon Johnson, let me ask you, there's a piece out in the Times today, the New York Times, uh, which talks about Democratic dissatisfaction with uh, President Obama. It's quite a lengthy piece, and one of the things it talks about is a meeting with congressional leaders where um, Harry Reid says to the president, look, you know, the, the, uh, the Republicans, they're blocking our nominees, judicial and otherwise, you've got to do something about this, you've got to get involved. And he says, oh, you and McConnell work it out. And he, like, left or, that, or changed the subject. And, and reportedly, that really ticked off Harry Reid. And it goes on to talk about the total lack of a relationship with Almost anyone in Congress, forget the Republicans, we're talking about the Democrats. He doesn't talk to them, he doesn't play golf with them, he doesn't do anything with them. And then he has this terse exchange with, of all people, Harry Reid, um, the, 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 the antithesis of, of LBJ, correct? Yes, I think that's an important story uh, of his presidency. I think the strained relationship with Republicans is more predictable, uh, given how Washington works, and it's difficult to imagine things being that much different. Uh, but the strained relations with his own party has been a problem from the very start of his presidency. It's very different than the kind of relationship Johnson tried to nurture with Democrats. He realized Capitol Hill was essential to his success. And I think Obama has never been as committed uh, to building those bridges with members of his own party. And there's a lot of resentment on Capitol Hill among Democrats uh, toward the White House for this reason. Are we talking, uh, you're not a psychologist, uh, are, are we talking narcissism? Are we talking detachment, which Republicans have accused him in the overall picture when it comes to issues and hands-on? Uh, is this just who he is, do you think? Well, I'm not a psychologist, so I don't know. I mean, I think uh, part of this is someone who was never totally immersed in Washington politics. He only had limited experience there. Uh, and it's not just about an experience. I think there is something of a distaste for that part of the political process that he's always exhibited. And part of him wanted to transform Washington originally and get beyond this, but this is the Washington he governs. And I think uh, there is a part of President Obama who doesn't like this part of the job. Yeah, and of course, not only does it fly in the face of the, uh, uh, the way Johnson operated, but also uh, even though the, it's a myth that he went across the street and had beers with Tip O'Neill, Reagan had a relationship. I mean, all presidents have uh, some sort of relationship. And of course, Bill Clinton, the triangulation, the, the reaching out, the welfare reform and other bills that he moved to budget, uh, balanced budget. Uh, but this president, you know, it, it was evidence, uh, evidence when he talked about the, uh, the government shutdown, no negotiations, none on the debt ceiling, on the shutdown, nothing. And that was kind of unprecedented. It is. I mean, to be fair, he faces a, a congressional environment that's quite contentious. And certainly with the Republicans, I think the strains go both ways. And uh, this is part of the difficulty. Whoever's in the Oval Office now uh, just, you know, has a, a huge distance from the opposition on Capitol Hill. And the opposition on Capitol Hill doesn't really like whoever's in the o Oval Office. And this really makes us have a very dysfunctional Washington. But within the party, there was a lot of good feeling for President Obama when he started. Uh, and I think that is something he had more control over. And I think it would have helped him to nurture those relationships during the election cycles and during battles over policy so that right now, as he enters the final period, that the Democrats would have much warmer feelings and stronger loyalty to him as he needs them in, in these final months. All right, let's move on to Hillary, and as I mentioned, the piece that uh, you wrote uh, for uh, uh, CNN.com, Can Hillary Win Over the Left? 
Um, can't, well, let me ask you that question to start with. Can she win over the left of her own party? I think she can. I think, you know, this has been a story people have been talking about that the rifts between her and the left are uh, coming to the forefront again as a result of her statements on foreign policy or uh, stories about her connections to Wall Street and will Elizabeth Warren somehow emerge as the candidate for liberals. I think in the end, liberals in the party will settle uh, on Hillary Clinton and, and some will feel very good about her as a candidate. And I do think of all the potential problems she faces, this is one uh, that she can overcome because of her record and also just because of the state of the party right now. Oh, okay, so uh, you know, you also talked about her three hundred thousand dollar book fees. I don't know how that goes over with the left of the party either. Um, but um, talk about the book tour. Talk about now her and the flood. I mean, there have been, as you heard, uh, for, uh, you know, in the soundbite we played from Morning Joe, it's not wasn't a good book tour. Uh, she made mistakes and then in, at times doubled down on those mistakes. Like, you know, we couldn't afford, you know, we were broke, dead broke. And then her, her, even Bill Clinton came out and said, well, you know, technically she was right. Um, uh, there's been a lot of mistakes, a lot of misstatements. And, and then, of course, now the attempt to separate herself when it comes to the Obama foreign policy. Uh, how much of a problem is all that going to be going forward with the left and with the general public? Well, the problems with the book tour, the problems with this initial rollout of post-Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton certainly were not good and certainly were damaging to her and brought back some concerns uh, that many Democrats have back from 2008 about how she would run this campaign. They're not debilitating. We're very far away from an election and they are correctable. But they are matters she has to pay attention to, and she has to remember, as she learned uh, when she was the first lady, that perceptions in the media matter, that your statements have to be made with great precision because they will uh, become disastrous if, if, if you don't have that kind of caution and skill. And, and she'll have to refine her skills and get back into the political game quickly if she's going to run. On foreign policy, I think the rifts are okay. I think overall, her and President Obama certainly are not that far apart uh, on most major issues. And in the end, I think that Obama and his supporters would, uh, you know, follow through with Hillary Clinton. They're not going to vote for a Republican, and there's not many other Democrats right now in the field. So I think that can be overcome. But the missteps that you open the story with, I do think are important, shouldn't be downplayed as uh, not the big issues in campaigns. Those are exactly the kinds of things that can trip you up as you run for president. And just one more on the foreign policy real quick. Um, you know, sh Democrats might digest it, but what about independents? Certainly Republicans won't. I mean, ha how is she going to, if she's not that far apart, I mean, you know, running away from the Russian reset, um, Syria, the, the Egypt, the, you know, Benghazi, which we still haven't even had the select committee hearings yet. Uh, the, usually, you know, elections, the presidential elections don't focus on foreign policy, but uh, this might be a completely different story. ISIS now, I mean, we don't know where we'll be at that point. Well, there is a sense, especially with ISIS and, and other and in Israel, a sense that there is a crisis uh, going on in the world. And I do think even if the next election is mostly about economics, if, if these kinds of events continue, voters will be thinking about foreign policy leadership. And so uh, there will be parts of her record that uh, Republican opponents will play up to, but she's not going to win the Republican vote. Right. Uh, so the, the question is the independence. And, you know, Republicans have challenges of their own, the challenges between a more libertarian kind of neo-isolationist wing and a more hawkish interventionist wing. Oh, yeah. No, the the the, uh, the, the Rand Paul and the yeah. uh, and the Ted Cruz. Let me ask you before we get uh, before we run yeah. out of time. Al Sharpton, I believe it was, uh, called into question uh, the race issue with Hillary and Bill. Um, and, you know, it goes back to the, uh, the, the primaries um, uh, uh, against Barack Obama. Will, she, will that be uh, brought up? Will that be an issue, do you think, with maybe the Al Sharptons of the world? It could be an issue, and I do think she will be pressed within the Democratic Party, especially after recent events about where she stands on these issues. But... I do think she can make a case on racial issues, on issues of gender. There, she's been pretty progressive, actually. Uh, and I think she can make a, a strong case that in the field of candidates, she is uh, you know, one of the best qualified that they will have 
uh, to vote for. So I think of all the issues, that's the one where she probably can offer the most forceful response if she does it effectively. Julian, thank you very much. Great to talk to you, sir. Thank you. All right, my pleasure. All right, folks, very, very interesting, uh, very interesting piece. Check it out at CNN.com, and also uh, check out his book, uh, very interesting to compare LBJ uh, to, uh, to Barack Obama and most other presidents to Barack Obama, for, for that matter. All right, folks, uh, guess what? We have another poll, and before we go, we want your opinion. Is Rand Paul right? Do you think the Ferguson police are over-militarized? Go to Newsmax.com slash polls, Newsmax.com slash polls. Vote now. Up next, give me five. Don't go away.